Bye. Welcome to a very cold Masai Mara. The sun was blazing earlier, it was beautifully warm, and I didn't bring my jersey. But lucky enough, I brought my shuka. Now, we've been looking for lions, and we haven't had much success. And uh, the reason is, mostly because the grass is so incredibly long at the moment, but Eggsy did pull off an absolutely magical spot. And we've got one of our dominant males that resides below our escarpment where we live, and they, they are the there are said to be four of them. I have only ever seen three together. But he hasn't even moved. He's got a massively full belly. And uh, I don't know how Eggsy managed to spot him. And as you can see, he's not so far off the colour of the grass. <laughs> yeah, so this is our, our big boy. Um, so I said, some people say they're four. I've only ever seen three together. And uh, he is sleeping off a massive meal. Now, yesterday when we went on our very long mission across to the other side of the river and got caught in a massive storm, um, Yana, Steph's wife, uh, was in camp and she said she heard buffalo distress calls coming from below the camp while we were away. So maybe that's what, oh, the wind is really howling. So, so we, maybe that's what he snacked upon. Now, Karen's wondering, how does the climate in the Sabi Sands and Mara differ? Well, <laughs> well, the best way to describe it is, Karen, uh, we can go from about, well, it never gets really around 30 degrees, but the sun is very, very harsh. I'm actually changing colors at the moment at a really rapid rate. At least can't get it up there. But there we go. You can see uh, I'm really uh, changing colors very, very quickly. And we've got to put on sun cream about 20 times a day. But then one cloud comes over and this cold wind comes in and it's freezing. And of course, um, rainstorms all over the place. Look at this. Maybe you can see pretty much where we got stuck in a massive storm yesterday. There's another one. Um, we were actually, no, no, no. We were further, we were further to the south um, uh, on, on the other side of that hill. Now, so it, it is very different because we are high altitude. Um, where we're sitting at the moment is probably about 2,000, oh, sorry, I lie, 1,600 meters above sea level. And uh, where we live, which is up there, on top of that cliff, there we go, that's a, a, actually Angama. We live in the valley behind them. Um, that, is, that is about 2,000, um, 2,100 meters above sea level. So it's very, very high. And that's actually one of the reasons the Masai Mara is this and uh, is this absolutely incredible place. So we are surrounded by ancient volcanoes and there's some active volcanoes less than 300 kilometers from us in Tanzania around Natron, Older Lingai, um, where the Maasai's God lives actually up on top there. And basically what happened is all these massive volcanic eruptions have layered this whole plateau here below the escarpment that we're sitting on with really rich uh, volcanic ash. Now this has happened a very long time ago. And, and over, over the years, that ash has, has produced an absolutely exceptional climate for grass. Now, if you had to compare this to somewhere in South Africa that you might know, um, Dalström or, or somewhere in the, uh, up in the Drakensberg Mountains. Now, that's normally considered sour felt because the soils aren't as good, so you get mediocre grasses up there. But because of this volcanic ash, uh, we've got really good soil for grasses. And because of the altitude, we get the rainfall. So most high altitude mountain areas in Africa get really good rainfall, but they do not have the, the, the soil types to hold um, Thamida, basically uh, the red oats grass they call it here. We call it Natal red grass in South Africa. And that is pretty much most animals' favorite food. So it is a, a, a product of geology, the Maasai Mara. Uh, and being up high, uh, it can get quite cold. But because we're on the equator, it's very, very similar. Our weather doesn't change much through the year up here. It is, at night it gets down probably in the early morning to about 8 or 9 degrees Celsius. And during the day, most days, it'll get up to about 27, 28. To go over 30 is abnormal. To go below 8 or 9 is abnormal. So it's a very, very temperate climate. But if you're, if you're used to living in very hot climates like me, it can get very chilly very quickly. But thankfully, I've got my shuka. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not walking. So... It, there's theories on, and I, I actually have to say I, I believe it completely. If if you had to walk into a lion in this area wearing your shuka properly, like I am at the moment, and carrying a stick or a spear, 
the lions just absolutely disappear they run away from you they are so scared of the Maasai people uh, they, but I mean that's thousands of years of history all playing all playing into in, into each other so that's that's actually learned behavior because if you walked up to a lion in a shuka in the sabi sands he would be like mm, like most lions are now Len is wondering, will we be doing night drives? Uh, yes, we most certainly will, Len. You must remember that we're just the forward team. And, uh, well, Dave's actually joining us today. Yeah, so, uh, and, and, and we've got Eggsy, Dave, Steph. Who else? We've got Alex and um, Jared, who's new to the team as well, but you will get to meet him. Um, he does complicated Wi-Fi stuff, which is over my head. And uh, so that, that, that's our current team here at the moment. And uh, Dave joins today, and then I think Rebecca's coming very, very soon. But once the, the rest of the team is here, we've still got three vehicles uh, that are being f finished up by VM. VM's also here, but he's in Nairobi doing what VM doing, does best, cutting and welding and <coughs> with spanners and ratchets and whatnot. So this, this vehicle, Chiku, is actually not going to be one of our normal presenting vehicles, but it was the first vehicle ready. It is um, actually going to be the tech vehicle, the, uh, the backup vehicle. But we have made these holes in the roof and so there we go you can see a big hole in the roof and another hole in the roof for the camera and then um vm has welded when he came down here for the tv shows he took one look at uh, the tripod set up and he was like no so he's actually bolted uh, a pedestal into the floor of this car that we can mount the tri the the head of the camera on so it's a bit easier to move so we have this as our filming vehicle for now and uh, it is it is very exciting and most of what we're doing at the moment is of course you wouldn't have been seeing too much of us in the shows is uh, we're exploring and and also working out how to bounce things well not me i just drive the, the clever people around who work out how to make everything work so it's actually a really big 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 project um with the camp being built <laughs> that's what he thinks of the wind and so it's it's really 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 fascinating and uh and 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 basically what we're also figuring out about the lion prides and stuff like that and uh Eggsy, what is the most lions you've ever seen in one day 36 lions we saw 36 lions in total yesterday uh, and of course some of those sightings were in areas where we we, we can't currently uh, broadcast from but that's one of the reasons we here is to work out where all the prides are and um, what are the most going to be the most important prides where we have to focus our attention on so we saw actually after we saw scar and um one other musketeer and thank you very much for sending the, the names of the musketeers in i can only remember one now which i think is morani which is obviously um a young warrior in in swahili oh and hunter but i've forgotten the fourth one's name i will remember excuse me Sorry. So as we're saying, so just beyond after seeing Sky and them, we, we found uh, the rest of the Paradise females, five females and another two cubs, and they were they'd killed a buffalo right on the edge of the Mara River, and uh, there was a crocodile trying to come up and they chased the crocodile back down to the river. So I just got to now try to do my maths now. So we had three females and six cubs, um, at, and we had another two cubs with the second sighting. So that puts us at eight cubs. Um, and seven females that we know about so far in the Paradise Pride. Then, literally just beyond then, we saw more lions on top of a granite boulder we couldn't get up to. So we, we don't know how many were up there. But again, um, chatting to the head guides on both sides of the river and stuff, those are all Paradise Pride. So we're looking at over 10 females, probably close on 10, 11 cubs, and of course, the four musketeers. Now, they are dominating the main wildebeest crossing area. So obviously, that's a very important area for us. So that's one of the areas we're going to be working in. And we're going to be actually going to go try to figure out how we're going to do that tomorrow. Now, oh, I couldn't, I forgot, I've completely forgotten, I got sidetracked on lines, but I've got a question about brown hyenas, and I, I just can't remember who it was from, I'm sure FC are going to tell me, but we do have a bit of a delay. Uh, were there any brown hyenas up in the mountains here? Now, no, there are no brown hyenas uh, in East Africa. Night, night warp um, was asking that. So there are no brown hyenas in East Africa whatsoever. Um, they are in truly a southern African species. The only place they sort of leave the, the, the real southern Africa is to go into, into Angola a little bit along the coast from Namibia. But, okay, now I've got to get my bearings correct. Okay, so, Eggs, you see this one tree here? So not this tree, the one tree. Okay, on, 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 in, okay, yeah, in the middle, that one. And we go beyond that tree and over that hill, 
and then slightly to the right there's a dip in that far line of hills okay now that's there, there's a there's a conservancy out there called siana um there's a spring there called siana springs and i actually went there when i was about so jump onto google go have a look let's try taina we're very unlikely to see them in the areas that we're operating specifically down in the Masai Mara itself because there's such a massive population of spotted hyenas and ah there we go Alan thank you I will get to you in a second so there's such a, a, a huge amount of lions and, and spotted hyenas in 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 the Mara itself uh, that the striped hyenas are generally in the conservancies on the peripheries and this is right on the edge of a striped hyenas range they then extend well up to north um, Scott and Nikki get a lot of them where they are in Samburu and they actually extend all the way through uh, the, the Arab states and into India so so the, the striped hyena do come down that but no brown hyena they're exclusively southern Africa and Alan said Sikiu is the name of the fourth musketeer well who knows what it means guys you've got to tell me what it means I know what the others mean Scarface is pretty pretty obvious Marani is a young warrior in Maasai and um, Hunter pretty self-explanatory but Sakani I'm not sure what that means so if anyone knows what that means hashtag Safari Live let me know teach me I want to learn with you isn't this exciting we're live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya and we have the sleepiest male lion I have seen in a long time right next to us Eggsy's smiling from ear to ear and for those of you who weren't who haven't watched all our broadcasts from um, from from the Mara uh, Eggsy probably described uh, his feeling of being in the Mara and driving around this exquisitely beautiful place and seeing these incredible animals he says I've been trying to figure out what it is that um, I've been feeling since I've been in Kenya and he says it's like falling in love and that it is I mean we are in probably one of the most spectacular places on the planet and uh, we get to share it all with you and uh, as, as we continue building and, and getting everything sorted, we will be able to share more and more of this incredible country and this incredible part of the world with you. And we are very, very excited to do that. Now, I don't think this chap is going to move at all um, by the time we have to get out of the park. So, oh, I got sidetracked. Yes, we will be doing night drives. We're just waiting for the rest of the crew and the vehicles, um, and we will be starting to do night drives from then. We're going to have thermal cameras and all sorts of gadgets. It's just the best. And as I said, it's just absolutely exciting and amazing to be here. And you know what? I'll put up with the cold to see all the incredible, incredible, incredible stuff that's coming we've got the migration coming we've got to figure out all these line prides and i can't wait to do it all with you now speaking of a flat flat cat it sounds like james and i are on the same program this evening <laughs> 